Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Other Production. Today, I want to show you how you can use M Cabinet to create your own custom acoustic guitar impulse responses. Now, these are going to be synthetic, but I hopefully will be able to show you how you can make them sound good like actual real acoustic guitar impulse responses. The first one I have here, this is actually a real one. I found this online a long time ago, and, and it's just basically an acoustic guitar IR that will make your electric sound somewhat like an acoustic. So I have my uh, electric guitar plugged in. This is what it sounds like by itself. Very uninspiring, uh, doesn't sound too good. But let's make this 100% wet. So to me, that sounds like an acoustic guitar. Uh, of course, like the higher strings don't sound so great to me. Uh, I believe that's because the of the fact that uh, just the way the guitar is set up, I have really thin strings and I have the action very low. So I'm not sure if there's anything you can do about that. However, maybe if you had a piezo pickup on your uh, electric guitar, that might make it sound better. So, but that's just a general idea. So this is a real one. Here's another one that's actually included in M cabinet. It sounds like this in stereo. <laughs> Now to me, okay, that's really sounding like an acoustic guitar. So what we want to do is make a synthetic version of something like this. So let me show you how. Let's go here to C, and this is just blank. You see here in the profile, there's basically nothing here. So it just sounds fairly dead. What we want to do is make it sound like these two and we can look at some of the characteristics of it and do this with EQ. So I see here around like a hundred we have a bit of a hump for both of them. It's a little bit over a hundred but we'll start about there. Uh, let's take one here, this node, and what I can do is just make this bigger so it's a little easier to see. This. Let's move this up a bit, change it to peak, I'll move it up maybe six, seven more. Don't want it too fat, maybe around here. One. Let's listen to this. And you can sweep around the frequency here, like this. Might even want to turn it up a little bit more, 10. To find wherever you want and wherever it sounds good to you. Uh, this will be kind of like the base of our sound. Now, if you notice, you see like a bunch of like valleys and things, uh, you know, peaks and valleys here. The same thing you'll notice here. And you probably think like, that's going to take a lot of EQ notes to do this. We only have about five here. But there's actually an easier way we can do this. Now what we're going to do is use one, we'll right click it to open it. And you see here where it says harmonics. We can turn the dynamics off because we don't really need that. We're going to take this and we're going to move this. You can either move it up uh, in the right direction here. And if you see, okay, it's putting lots of things there. Or you can move it down. Down, it's not actually the opposite. The first harmonic will go uh, you know, negative gain, and the next one will go positive, negative, positive, like this. There we go. Now, I notice here, it seems like the Q is a little bit uh, low. Maybe it shouldn't be quite so fat. We can actually turn that up to maybe like two or so. Let's hear it. I actually like doing it this way, turning it in, in the negative direction. So you can hear what it's doing, but you're thinking, eh, I, this isn't exactly right. It's not exactly octaves like this. So there's a few ways we can change this. The first way is I like to use this linear button. So this will change it. Uh, I believe it's, actually, look in here, linear. Button enables a linear harmonic spacing. Uh, so when the main frequency is, say, 100 and the semitone's value is 12, then the default logarithmic mode, uh, the harmonics, is 200, 400, 800. 
increasing by 12 semitones each time. Normal. Uh, this is suitable because the filters themselves are logarithmic. However, harmonics generated by physical instruments are not spaced this way. Rather, for semitones value of 12, they increase by a multitude of 12 to 12 of the main frequency each time. So, for example, for a base, base frequency of 100, they'll be at 200, 300, 400, 500. In the linear mode, harmonics work this way. Okay. So, I just went over that. That was probably boring for you that don't like math, but you get the idea. If you want to read more, read it yourself. When we click it, if you look here, you'll see what it does. It just kind of scrunches it, which to me is sometimes better. Uh, let's hear this. Off. Another way you can change this is by moving the semitones. So now it's every 12 semitones here, but we can move it like this. So move it however you like. I didn't think 12 sounded that bad, actually. And of course, adjust the cue to taste. You might want it a little bit sharper. You might think, oh, no, that's way too sharp. In the linear mode, it works a little bit differently also, so you can have it a slightly lower cue than I had it before. Let's try it like this. And of course, when you're doing this, sometimes you do this for so long, you can't even remember what it sounded like before. Sometimes it's good to turn this off or turn the wet-dry down. Like, okay, it is doing something. I can move it up a little bit more, too. Like, well... Now, we can do more with that if you want. Uh, actually, I might change the semitones, but that's okay. We'll do that later. Another thing is you notice it seems here that it actually increases in frequency at a certain point. Uh, and we'll try to do that too. So I'll take this number five, and this is already a shelf. Move it down here, move it up a little bit. I need to keep track of this. I want to keep the input and the output about equal. So let's try this here. <laughs> Turn it down a little bit more. I don't want it to clip. Now let's hear it dry. This is starting to sound better and closer to what I want. From here, we can do other things like use one of these and maybe start scooping out some mids here. Not so much. Turn it up a little bit. So get it wherever you like it. Uh, you can also, without going and right clicking it, you can move these things here. So if I think, ah, oh, I want to cue a little bit wider. Whatever sounds good. And of course, you can compare it back and forth with the other ones like this. Now, this isn't exactly what I want. And of course, we're going to do more to it. So let's like look how we can actually uh, change a few things. If you look for both of these, uh, especially this one, you see up here, it's like, oh, there's a big mess up here. And how can we do this? We want these resonances. Let's start adding some of those in there. From here, we can turn on Resonator 1. It's in stereo by default, but I like to put this uh, in mono just because it's easier. And you can use any of these algorithms. And I think first one, number one, you see it has very fine uh, maybe resonances here. This one's B is extremely fine. C is a little bit uh, wider. This is, you know, I guess, I don't know what it is, wider, fatter, I guess. Uh, D is also thin, and E is super fat. I think C is a good one here. We can also adjust the smoothing to make them a little bit wider like this. 
if we want. Uh, so you can do that to taste. I don't want them super thin, maybe about here. Seems good. Now, if you notice the other ones, they don't have a lot going on in the low end. It's mostly in the high end. So the way to actually do this is, you see here the decay? We can turn this all the way up. You see, oh, it's cutting off all that, so there's not much going on there, or it's very little. Also, you see the frequency is at 200, so that means where it's going to start to decay is right there, 200. What we can do is move this up, like here. So you see, we move it all the way up, and it goes away. Let's try around, maybe like mm, a little bit under 500 there. And the same thing with the treble, you see, oh, decreasing as it increases uh, in frequency. What we can do is do the opposite here and start moving this the cat down like this. Uh, we can also move it up here. You think like, ah, 800 is a bit too much. Move it around. Like, mm, maybe 1,000 something and start moving it up like this. Now let's hear this. If you don't like that, like, uh, these are a little bit annoying, I want to change that. Just click any of these and it'll change the randomizer. So I think, uh, the treble's not really so much of a problem, but the mids aren't good. So let's click this and it'll change all these randomly. This. Maybe the treble is a problem. Let's try that. Eh, too bright. Mids sound good. Now we can do this one more time if we want even more uh, of these resonances. We can go into here and I'll use B because it's more of the fine resonances. We'll take this and turn the decay down, turn this up here. We can even mess with the crossover and that does something, although I don't know if you want it. Uh, let's see here. We can move it around like 2000 or so and turn the decay down a bit. And turn this up a bit. Now let's see what this sounds like. So if you like that, that's cool. If you think, yeah, it's too much, you can adjust it here with the depth, like this. At a certain point, I think it kind of thins it out, and you also hear like some metallic ringing, which you don't really want. But that will give you uh, a lot of the tone. And the next thing you can do is you can actually use these wideners here. So this will create almost like a reverb effect. And we can now adjust the bass and treble response of this. They actually didn't have this before, but now they do. And this is the decay just like before. Uh, the frequency by default is 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz, so it's not doing anything. But we can actually move this up. So let's say, oh, maybe a little bit under 180 something. And the top frequency, let's move this down. Yes. And of course, this is probably too much. So let's move it down here. That's sounding pretty good. I may not want it to be in stereo though. If you don't, just go back to cabinet here and then change the widening to mono. And of course, adjust everything to taste. I think, you know what? This is a little bit too metallic here. Let me turn this down a bit. Same thing here. Turn this down a bit. So 
So we have that and from here you can also go back into the cabinet and do some other things like for example you might want to use the tilt control here. Or if you want it thicker like this. Other things we can do is by altering this first node here, we can really change the sound. And the same thing with the semitones. Now, of course, I can't spend forever making the perfect uh, acoustic guitar IR, and of course, everyone's taste is different. You might think, oh, it sounds terrible, but hopefully what I've showed you here will show you how you can actually create your own sound. So if you think, I don't like the harmonics uh, there, I want to change the frequency, I want to do other things with it, I want more resonances or I want less resonances, that's all possible. And when you're finally done with this and everything is exactly how you want it, uh, especially for your guitar, you can go here and export mono IR and just put it wherever you want. Or if you want a stereo IR, just click export IR. Another thing to keep in mind is, of course, your pickup selection will vary. So if I switch it to my bridge pickup, it sounds like this. Next position. Next. 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 So that will of course vary. And you could actually, if you wanted to, you could make a separate IRs for each position. So you can find exactly what you like for any guitar you might have. So this could work with acoustic, a uh, real acoustic guitar, an electric guitar, a guitar with piezo pickup. It could probably even work for other things that aren't guitars. So experiment with this and find some other cool stuff yourself. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, and if you have a question, leave me a message down below, and subscribe if you haven't done that. And also, make sure you check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.